Hi guys, welcome along to stream number six, episode number 16 of the Talus Principle 2. Last time out, we completed the entirety of North 2. Turn that down a little bit in my ear. And um, yeah, we completed the entirety of North 2. So we're going to be heading over to North 3. And my goal today, I don't know if it's too ambitious, but I kind of want to do the entirety of North 3 and potentially on this on the assumption we're going back to the mega structure after that, get the second part of the mega structure done because I kind of think that's going to be like 50% of the game. So that is my aim tonight. Um, hopefully we can um, get there. Uh, yeah, we've gone back to the overlay, but only for this game, Napos, because of the fact that I've had to run the game at um, 750, uh, 750, 720p. So I kind of thought there's no point in having like a 1080 display of the game when I'm only running it at 720. So um, yeah, that's why we've gone back to the overlay approach. Uh, all right, let's head to North 3, the Lost Marshes. This area looks flooded as well. Our ancestors melted a whole lot of ice. After they died, most coastal settlements were claimed by the sea. South of New Jerusalem, there's a whole city under the water. We went there once with Garrus when I was an apprentice. It was eerie. That's exactly why the founder created the goal. When you go past the limits, this is what happens. Mother Nature always gets her revenge in the end. This isn't revenge, Alrighty. Al. It's just failure. People, cities, mountains. As far as the sea is concerned, it's all the same. Their mistake was forgetting that, telling themselves nothing would change. It always does. All right, away we go. Trees looking different to when you play the seers, or are you just making an observation of the area? I don't know if like changing my settings and everything has done anything to that sort of thing. From Yarnith to Athena, beloved founder, I beg us beg you to return to us. We cannot achieve the goal without you. You are the one who defined Elohim and who overcame the trials of the simulation. What are we before that? How can we possibly find a path that will not lead to the mistakes of the past? You are our sole link to the wisdom of the pro progenitor. Without you, we are lost. Praised be your name. Exerted from What's Wrong with the World by C.K. Chesterton. Our modern prophetic idealism is narrow because it has undergone a persistent process of elimination. We must ask for new things because we are not allowed to ask for old things. The whole position is based on the idea that we have got all the good that can be got without got out of the ideas of the past but we have not got all the good out of them perhaps at this moment not any of the good out of them and the need here is the need to complete to need of complete freedom for restoration as well as revolution there is one metaphor of which the moderns are very fond they are always saying you can't put the clock back simple and obvious answer is you can a clock being a piece of human construction can be restored by the human finger to any figure of the of hour in the same way society being a piece of human construction can be reconstructed upon any plan that has ever existed that has ever existed you can indeed turn the clock back but if it stops ticking it's dead Black Snow from Selective Archive Documents A to C. The coal mine. Okay, Black Snow is coal. Okay, that makes sense. The coal mine finally brought decent jobs. It lifted us up out of poverty and made us proud. We weren't just ordinary workers, we were the lords of the underworld. And with our skills, we kept the whole country alive. The mine also brought 
back lung, gruesome injuries, brought black lung, sorry, gruesome injuries and death. And when it went away, it brought the collapse of our entire society. As for the plant, I know it brought electricity and even more jobs, and I know what a difference that made in people's lives. I also know that when we used to go out and play, there were black flakes in the snow. Why didn't they just switch to a safe technology once they realized coal was dangerous? They didn't always have a choice. Sometimes coal was all they had or were allowed to have, and the alternative was poverty. At other times, they wanted to switch, but there were powerful interests that prevented change. We can't blame people for the world they were born into. Indeed. As much as people want to change and do for the better, it's not always as easy as that. Okay. We have one of our... Then extra puzzles here. This is a green connector puzzle. Excellent. Hey Team Spen, how's it going? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. I'm drawn to I was gonna say I was drawn to this structure over here, however, no it's off the beaten track. I believe oh no, okay. I am still drawn to it. Interesting. I thought for a moment, because it like where the train lines ran into, I thought it was part of the uh, the train circuit. However, I guess not. And we have some more uh, information, this time from Lithrazir. You may wonder why I insist on these unsanctioned, unplanned expeditions. Some think it is because I hate civilization That's cool. and prefer to lose myself in nature. This is precisely the opposite of the truth. It is because I love New Jerusalem that I have to leave, because it is only when I am here that I fully appreciate what the city means. And also because I believe that if I stayed at home, I would one day be ethically compelled to commit acts of violence against those who in their arrogance. Imagine that humans should live in harmony with the chaos that surrounds us. Yeah, I just did that. A big circle there. Get back on the uh, beaten track, shall we? There is a spark there, however I don't believe I can get to it from here. I think I've got to get to it from over there, so I think we're going to need to backtrack here to be safe. Oh, we can cross the water. Or not, I can cross over to there though, I don't believe so. Carry on going. I feel that there's like a lot of um, there's a lot of kind of almost deforestation in this area which is interesting Yeah, I don't know if it has anything to do with my graphic settings, I see as possibly. Like I say, I made some tweaks to the engine and did some different bits and pieces earlier, so... Um, I don't know if anything... What's happened with that? I haven't found any of the lost puzzles yet. Yeah, it wasn't as deep as I thought it was, actually, Papirius, so... 
kind of took me uh, a little bit by surprise. Checking for hidden stuff, of course. I love like the, the sounds of nature in, in this area as well. I mean, like, well, not just this area, but all the areas. I really do get that sense of being out in the wilderness. Let's pick up the path again. Running with the deers. This will be one of our lost puzzles. Glados found a way into chat. Here I am saying I'm gonna like stay on the path and then I instantly veer off the path and go exploring. Again, though, like this massive sense of deforestation in this area is. Duh. Get back on the path, really, really do. Quite possibly, yeah. Not entirely convinced though that the um like running in this area, I'm not entirely convinced that the settings are better. Oh, I forgot the sprint. Really not. Take a leap of faith, doesn't it? Jeez. Oh, I see another Prometheus spot. First time I've actually seen two in there. Clever.
Are you just going like a real long way over the top? Okay, I'm guessing that's going to be at the top somewhere once we've um, done the Tetromino puzzle. lab the lost lab is no longer lost as we have found it so this one looks a bit derelict one of the founders labs seems to collapse I guess it shows that, that even the founder has limits there's no human building that can survive without maintenance roots are stronger than concrete unless you destroyed on purpose of course but it seems like the ceiling just came down I'm not 100% sure, but I think the puzzle clusters on the island correspond to the presence of labs. Except the lab near our base camp, which doesn't have any puzzles attached to it. Although it does have other strange structures surrounding it. Are the puzzles guiding us to the labs, or are we just finding the labs by accident? Or, here's another thought. Are we simply just following the paths and finding the lads? And nobody is guiding us to them. Okay. So we are missing one of our hidden puzzles, but we haven't really explored the that side the map yet um that's what i think i'm gonna do i think i'm actually gonna dive into the puzzles now and we'll start uh we'll start some solving and obviously this is where the Our thing is going to end up, which I think kind of like it's up there somewhere on one of these branches. So I'm quite interested to see how we're going to actually find it or how we're going to get to it. Um, right there, yeah, let's jump into puzzle number one. So I haven't seen any of the guys walking around here, which is a little weird. Substitution bring an item to swap. Ha. Huh. Okay. Guessing. Okay. So it appears. I've had a closer look at the song drone. It's based on the original prototype with some modifications. As usual, the data is a mess, but I strongly suspect there might be a functional version somewhere. I know some of you have heard stories about the answers this device might reveal, but please remember that is not our main priority here. Keep an eye open for it, but focus on finding Athena. Okay, we have possibilities. I'm guessing this is possibly called possibilities because we have multiple things that we can swap this time around.
Interesting. We can jump on the queue, but we can't jump up to there, which is interesting. All right, let's take up here. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think we were meant to be able to. If I'm honest, LB. I think we'll swap that. And we'll swap it again. Uh, not as complicated as I thought. Hardest feet to grasp, this is. What did puzzles mean to the founder? Hey, somebody's been sneakily taking pictures of me. What did the puzzle represent to the founder? Whatever they may mean to us and our culture, what did they mean to her? We have no record of her speaking positively about puzzles. She certainly never expressed any interest in solving more of them. So what if to her, they were trials to overcome or challenges to enjoy, but a trap she's had to escape? Wasn't all she wanted at the end to stop solving puzzles and start living a free life in the real world? I mean... I from the simulation, I wouldn't say that was the case. It was more of a case that she was just, for lack of a better like description about it, she was kind of almost forced to do them. Um, but yeah, that was the yes. Yeah, the one. Technically, the founder kind of just was in the simulation, right? And was solving the puzzles and didn't really, like, have free will to be there. It was just kind of like what she was thrown into, right? Uh, right, the wall. What have we got here? That opens that, so we could potentially stop that. Uh, okay, so if I take this... Well, I could do this. Uh, okay, I can't see that from there. Oh, there's a... Okay. I can see that from over there. So, I, I'm not entirely sure here, but I kind of feel what we're going to do is we will be... Opening this, swapping that, getting the jammer out to the other side, and then doing something with that. So, we will take that. We will... It's the only problem there, isn't it? Maybe actually instead... Makes it redundant. We can't do. We can't do any swapping there. That's good to know. So we're gonna want to take this round to there, aren't we? Also, I may have wrecked this puzzle. Um, I don't want to use the Prometheus terminal. X? Yeah. Let's just reset the puzzle, right? So now we'll swap this. I think what we're going to want to do is actually swap that while that is open. So we'll take... That needs to remain open, right? Take this. Swap it with that. 
Drop it with that. Drop it with that. Reopen that. And then take that, swap it with the jammer. Open that there. No, the laser wouldn't reconnect. I couldn't place it in a position to make it reconnect, so... Well, I'm not really sure okay. Keep going. what was going on there, if I'm honest. The interface, the devil's bargain. Theophilus of Adana to Dr. Faustus from Marlow to Goet. Goeth? Goethi? Again, pronunciation apologies. There's a story that the ancients kept telling. A wise man tempted by the devil to, to sell his soul in exchange for knowledge with terrible consequences. I've long wondered why they thought this story so important, and I'd be curious to hear what others think. The ancient writers knew that knowledge is dangerous and to and its pure and its purest pure and its pursuit often leads to tragedy. Knowledge is dangerous. For those who want to to hoard power. These stories are designed to keep ordinary people compliant. And yet, in a lot of stories that I've read, the writer seems fascinated with the devil's side of the argument. Keep people compliant? Not necessarily. I mean, well, I guess it is kind of a way, you know, kind of trying to teach right from wrong. It's trying to teach people that, you know, you have got to do the right thing. So Damien's got a point there, actually. Um, knowledge doesn't always lead to tragedy. They often conf they often conflated political anxieties with technological or inter nah, that's a bit too indeed. Excuse me, knowledge can be extremely disruptive to society. I mean saying that knowledge can be extremely disruptive to society is kind of like a almost sounds like a, a government trying to cover something up and saying you know, we're not going to tell people because if people know the truth, then everyone's going to revolt. So I don't think that's... Uh, well, whilst I see that viewpoint, I don't think that's the thing here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with Damien, actually. Exactly. After all, what if we use our knowledge for good of ordinary people? Can't have that. Feels a little dismissive of some great works of literature, but I get what you're saying. Uh, whilst I agree, LB, I mean, when they're in the in the context of what they're talking about with, like, ancient writers and things, I don't think, like, technology was as big a part in some of, like, the older kind of scriptures and, and stories that they were talking about, so, no, I don't disagree, but... Alright, puzzle four, what do we got? Prison. I seem to remember a puzzle. The original being called Prison, was it not? Okay, so. Oh, interesting. So we have three different items here that we can utilize. First things first. And to find a better position for this connector here. Stay about there. Okay, connector. bring blue through here, so we're going to need to use blue. Okay, so we need to think about how we reconfigure this. We need to somehow get blue Yeah, we, we need to get blue through here, but without disrupting the red, which is slightly problematic. Uh, no, it's not. We just use one less connector. So let's take 
this for now. And we will bring... Uh, oh, there's a connected that I've missed. Ah. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, I think I see... Potentially here. I feel like... Um, where is my other connector? Am I connected down? I feel like we need to get over the wall. To get over the wall, though, we're going to need to bring this blue through here first, right? I mean, that's... I must be able to complicate this. I know, you sound shocked. Knock, overcomplicating something? Surely not. Okay. Yep, I was worried that that was going to trap me in here, but that's going to give us a connector so that we can then revert back what we was going to do before. So... Oh, actually, we can just shortcut this now. Ah, interesting. Interesting that it gave me like the option to flick the switch when I was like stood on top of the box as well. I didn't actually have to jump in there to uh, do anything, which is quite interesting. Okay, so then we are just going to simply do that to there. And we can walk back through here with the red. Um, I didn't put that on the box, so that is going to interfere. But we actually... Oh, we need red through here. Okay, that's fine. We can do that. No, I haven't gone so close, so far away, actually. actually need to do now instead is you know what I didn't even need to do the blue really did I no actually I do need the blue I need the blue for that one there okay Alright, let me think about how we do this then. I think we are going to... I don't see that. I can see that directly from there, right? So, let's cut out the need for that. So we don't need that. So let's get rid of the blue as well, just so that we don't get this weird going on here. Okay, so that's there. Now, blue should be elevated.
we maybe do this without using the elevation on the blue. So if I don't elevate the blue, I would have one, two, three, I'd have four. Yeah, I would have four connectors, right? Okay. So if I do this, go to the elevation there and get my other connector here. Actually, then maybe we do take an elevation, but we elevate the red. solving puzzles. In a way, 1K's experience must be very similar to Athena's in the simulation. There's one difference, though. Athena was alone. All right, so when we come across a green, I just noticed a connector up there. So that will potentially be used for this puzzle. I'm going to see if I can make an initial setup here. Gonna have to come from this direction. See that and that. So. Take this. I'd say I really love the fact that like the puzzles completely unlock after you've solved something. Oh, is that not a? Oh, I dropped the freaking connector. an idiot. Oh. Is that not a connector? Oh, I think that's a RGB converter thing. Yeah, so I need to put a red and a blue into that. Okay, interesting. Maybe I can actually do this now. If I go back to puzzle four, then quite possibly I might be able to use the connectors from here um, and point them over to there if I can get a, a vantage point. Let's go and take a look. from here. Quite. 
Oh. But this going across. Um. I mean, okay. don't have any connectors left now here to do it from here. Hey, Doctress. How's it going? All right, I'm going to just keep that in mind, like, for the now. I, I'm not sure. I'm thinking maybe we only send one of them from here. Trying to make a bit more sense. So depending on what other colours we um, can see in other puzzles, I guess will depend on what we send. I'm good, thank you, Doctress. How about yourself? I remember if you were here the other night, so um, I'll ask just in case you weren't. How was your Christmas? Okay, a good one. Twice. Okay, so we can take the jammer first. One jammer could lead to a second jammer. That will open both of these, so we could then replace that jammer. And take that. Now, we need a blue, so we're going to need to take the RGB converter. Get the jammer out of there by doing that. This area we don't need to come back to, I don't believe. Let's just use both jammers for the time being. Okay. So, I think what we need to do... Bring this one in here. Open that. Go and get the E do free what's the thing jiggy for lack of a better name. And no. Hold on. We need to convert this to blue if we can. Uh so I'll take the jammer. And that one, take this out. Take this back over here. Oh, actually, clever. Very clever. That's clever. Okay, so we have that. Now we can take the jammer. Myself trapped in the process. Get that. Get the other jammer. Re jam that. Go back and grab our accumulator. I'm going to call it an accumulator. Get 
go. I did tune into that stream for a bit, so I'm sure to get myself back to the game. I'm giving the Daleks a rest though. Working on TARDIS now. Nice, right, good that you're, you're still at it. Okay, and there's our blue. No. Let's go and get our star. So I, I feel like the the intended way for the oh also we need to go and uh, listen to that the intended way for the red laser I think is going through the exit of um, puzzle four I would say that is the intended horses right, are broken lunch. not taught that is the way of humankind. So where that green laser is coming from there, I think that's um, possibly a way that we could do like a more natural way for it to come through. That formation looked like a moon. Look, look at that. Yeah, it seems a bit pointless having that extra exit there, I guess LB, because once you once you use the switch to get that second or third connector. It's, um, what was it coming back here? Oh, that's it. Three people on the ridge. Um, yeah, once you get that, um, click the switch that opens up the gate and it just gives you a, an exit. You don't need to worry about having anything open on the fizz or anything. So, yeah, it kind of seems a bit pointless. Mother, can I suggest something? Of course. Go ahead. The southern part of the island is completely dead. No animals, no plants. The soil is too alkaline for anything to live except bacteria. Yes, that's why it's a good location for some of the experiments. Well, if we want to show that we can make the cosmos more beautiful, then why don't we start there? The desert doesn't have to be dead. If we modify the conditions, life can thrive there. And that could be the first step towards spreading life to other worlds. What do you think? I think that sounds like a plan. Uh, I didn't go back for it, but we are going to go back over in that direction, so hopefully I can remember where it was, probably. Uh, all right, all around. All around the world. Probably use this. Can we use that? No, because we need the blue. Let's take this instead. There we go. Very punny. I'll be very I punny. I often think indeed. about how many cities there are out there under the ocean. Cities where people lived for thousands of years. Cities with their own history, their own culture. All of it lost under the waves. If they'd been less greedy, they could have kept all that. I don't think we can pass moral judgment on an entire species based on the decisions of a handful of leaders. But I do think they made a mistake. 
They stop caring about what they built. They stop seeing the romance of civilization. Yeah. I think I've said this before, but this game, like, when you listen to, like, what's discussed in this game, it's, uh... It's a scary insight into, like, the future, really. Did I do this one? I can't remember. I did not. Poisonous humility. Um, excerpt from orth Orthodoxy by G. K. Chesterton. But what we suffer from today, today is humility in the wrong place. Modesty has moved from the organ of ambition. Modesty has settled upon the organ of conviction, where it was never meant to be. A man was meant to be doubt doubtful about himself, but undoubting about the truth. This has been exactly reversed. Nowadays, the part of a man that a man does assert is exactly the part he ought not to assert himself. Does that make sense? It sounds a little weird. The part he doubts is exactly the part he ought not to doubt. The divine reason. Huxley preached a humility context to learn from nature, but the new skeptic is so humble that he doubts if he can ever learn. Thus, we should be wrong if we had said hastily that there is no humility typical of our time. The truth is that there is real hum humility typical of our time, but it so happens that this is practically a more poisonous humility than the wildest prostration frustrations of the ascetic. The old humility was a spur that, spur that prevented a man from stopping, not a nail in his boot that prevented him from going on, the old humility made a man doubtful about his efforts, which might make him work harder. But the new humility makes a man doubtful about his aims, which will make him stop working altogether. I had to read this twice to fully understand it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you there, Miranda, honestly. Uh, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I think a lot of these are um, taken from excerpts of real um, books or passages, aren't they? It's the um, you know, there's a lot of philosophy and, and such in um, the Talus in the original as well. It's incredible this entire submerged town just off the coast, surprisingly well preserved. Sailing over it, I finally understood what the ancients meant by eerie. I obviously couldn't have couldn't have the kind of philosophical response they did. But I think the mental response was pretty close. The contradictory response. Part melan melancholy, 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 part fascination. It's strange how tragedy and destruction make the beauty of civilization more obvious. P.S. A deer got into the maintenance area and made a huge mess. Sorry, I'll clean it. P.P.S. I may have been feeding it. Okay, really? That's interesting. LB. One of these books six years ago, you did not understand it at all. That makes me feel better. Uh, from Hepatica's Journals, Volume 1, The Founding of New Jerusalem, Day 296. Cornelius and Sarab Sarapai went back to the dam today. We've been holding off constructing any new humans to concentrate on building a home for them first, but there's a limit to what 13 people can do on their own. And everyone is eager to start construction of some of the more ambitious structures. Sarabai's kindness and patience is something that we certainly miss out here, where tempers can sometimes run high. And I'll miss Cornelius too. He was there when I was born, and he just is and he is just as much a father to me as Athena and Alexander Drenanum are my mothers. But I suppose I can always go visit them. The dam isn't that far, and once we complete the monorail with a few within a few decades I will truly only be a few minutes away what are, what are a couple of dozen years really when you might live forever very true just a drop in the ocean something I really like about Alex one of the reasons why I'm here doing this is that she's really humble 
She has this incredibly positive view of humanity. She believes we can accomplish anything, but it's not about her. She doesn't think that she's smarter or better than anyone else. She just looks at us as a species, and even though she can see how small we are in the grand scheme of things, she thinks that we could conquer the stars and give meaning to the universe. Even now, even when none of us are going to live to see it. Isn't that awesome? I can't jump off. There's obviously like a limit to like where you can jump from. Play. 